everybody, Michael Park here for CreativeCow.net, and uh, not too long ago, actually yesterday, Sean McGrath posted a question asking if anybody knew how to turn text into sand using Trap Code Particular. Now I know Aaron Rabinowitz has done a tutorial on Red Giant TV which shows you how to turn text into sand using Trap Code Form, but he specifically asked for Particular rather than Form. And since it would take far too long to type out an answer, I figured I would just show him using a video tutorial. And hey, uh, his answer is your gain because you get to take a look at this just like he does. So let's go ahead and get started. And you should remember, you know, always post your questions in the trap code forum at creativecow.net. You never know, your question just might end up being a personal tutorial just for you. So let's go ahead and show how we're going to do this effect. The first thing I need to do is create a new composition. I'm going to call this text source. And I'm going to be working at uh, a aspect ratio of 1.78 to 1 with a 800 by 450 and that's just you know a little smaller uh, than HD to make things go a little bit faster. Duration 9 seconds, you know, make it whatever you want. Just make sure that the duration is as long as the shot in which you're going to have the sand so you don't run into any problems later. Let's go ahead and click OK. And to this I'm just going to add some text. I guess I'll do creative cow.net and pop this over here in the middle where you want it and that's great. The next thing I want to do is pre-compose this into or drop it into another composition. I'm going to call this text source wipe. And let's open up this composition and what I'm going to do is animate the opacity of this over time so that only a small segment of it is visible as we go across. Now there are a couple different ways to do this. You can either take a mask and you know draw a rectangular mask and then come down here, choose the mask path, scrub down in time, you know, animate this whole mask. Whoops. Animate the mask over time as it sweeps across, and that will work fine. But it's kind of cumbersome and a little bit of a pain. And I kind of want to show you a different way to do it. Obviously, that would work just fine, uh, but let's do it a little differently. Let's choose Layer New, uh, Layer New Solid, and I'm going to call this Wipe, and click OK. Now to this, I'm going to add Effect Generate CC Light Sweep. Now what this does is create kind of this white beam of light, and it's great for making your text look three-dimensional, but we're going to use it as a luma mat. Uh, and I'll show you how that works in a second. I'm going to make the direction 90 degrees and what I'll do is just drag the center over here. I'll turn on or put the text source above this so we can see it uh, for now and grab this wipe and we'll set a keyframe for the center over here at frame zero. Maybe drop it over here and come down here to about four and a half seconds or so and I'm going to slide this across to all the way to the other side. Okay, whoops, uh, I forgot to set the keyframes. <laughs> Left click the stopwatch to set the keyframes and we'll drag this back over to this side and come down four and a half seconds, slide it over and off screen. Now if we scrub through the timeline you can see we have the simple wipe effect. Now what we need to do is increase the sweep intensity to give us a little more white in the middle like so. We've got a nice feathered edge here. Now we'll drop the text back below the wipe and change the track mat to Luma Matte Wipe. And now if we scrub through the timeline you can see we have the uh, text being revealed only where that white Luma Matte was, uh, which is what we want for purposes of creating our effect. Okay, let's jump back into the uh, project panel here and we're going to bring both of these layers into a new composition. And what I want to do is, first of all, add a fill to our text source wipe, uh, just so we can, you know, make sure that we can differentiate it between the text source layer and the text source wipe. So it's create effect, generate fill, and we'll leave it to the default red for now, no big deal. Get rid of this, and give us a little more room so we can see what we're doing. If we scrub through the timeline, you can see where the red comes across. That's our 
text source wipe layer that we've added the red to. The reason why I'm doing this is I'm going to add a linear transition to the text source so that it kind of wipes off. Let's choose Effect, Transition, Linear, Wipe. Okay, so now what I want to do is come down here in the timeline till the red just starts popping on. I'm going to set a keyframe for the transition completion. I'm going to scrub down here through the timeline till it's completely off and change the transition completion up to 100 and then I'll feather it out a little bit. Now to dial in our keyframes a little bit better, I'm going to hit U to reveal those keyframes. And you can see that uh, it isn't quite lined up yet, so we can just simply adjust these keyframes until it looks a little bit better. It looks like it came off a little too fast, so we can pull this back a little bit. We can always go back and adjust this a little later if we need to. Okay. I think that'll work for now. Very good. Okay, so let's grab the text source wipe. We no longer need the fill on here, but we now need to turn this into a 3D layer because we're going to be using it as a layer source for particular. Let's turn off its visibility and add a new solid layer. And we'll call this particular. Make sure it's comp size and click OK. Now to this, let's add effect trap code particular. Let's twirl down the emitter settings, and I want to increase the particles by a pretty good amount. So let's go up to about 50,000 to start. You change the emitter type from point to layer. Now I'm using particular 2.0, but this will work with particular 1.5. Uh, it's just the settings are might be in a little bit different place. Then turn the velocity down to zero, velocity random to zero, basically turn all these things to zero. Let's go down here to the layer emitter and choose layer from none to text source wipe which is going to use the that wipe that we had so it's only going to emit particles where the layer is opaque which is where we have that uh, the text being wiped across the layer sampling let's change from current time to to particle birth time this way it will sample the layer at the time the particles were born and not change the color otherwise these would go to black or be transparent and that's not what we want Layer RGB usage will just change to uh, none. We don't want to have that affect anything at all. Okay, so now we have some of, we can zoom in here a little bit. We have particles being emitted. Let's go ahead and change their parameters a little bit. We want to change the particle life to nine, which is the duration of our comp here. We want to change the size down to about two. This will make it much smaller and look a little bit more like sand. We can change the size random up to about 25. That way it just gives each particle a little bit different size to give us a little bit variation. And you can play with the color. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it at white because it matches our text, but you can make that really whatever you want. Now, as for the, uh, the direction of the sand that you want, I'll show you two ways to do it. The first is going to be kind of the dust effect where the particles will be flowing off screen and up almost like they're being blown in a sandstorm. And the second way will be when the particles drop and land on the floor. And uh, we'll do the, the first uh, one with the dust blowing off. All you need to do is come down here to the physics panel and you want it to be air physics. And what we're gonna do is increase the spin amplitude up. So they start kind of spinning in place and gives a little bit of motion. Now what you wanna do is change the wind in the X direction off, you know, fairly good, negative 300, looks good. And we change the Y negative as well, so it looks like it's blowing upward. And then what we can do is come down here to the turbulence field and increase the effect position parameter here till we get a little bit of wobble to give us more of an airy look. And as you can see, the text is being uh, changed into particles and the particles are then blowing off screen and I think this is pretty much the effect that you wanted you can make this a harder edge if you want to but uh, I just have it a little bit faded um, so anyway there's that and if you want you can turn on motion blur we'll change it from comp settings to on and we're going to increase the shutter angle to get the amount of blur that you want I don't know, 720. And then you can see the particles being emitted and blowing away. Now if you want denser particles, just increase the particles per second up here 
to 500,000 and you get a totally different effect altogether. It looks much more dense and the particles are just being bled off into space. So that's the first way with the dust. And what I'm going to do so that uh, I'm going to give you the project file so that you have this. I'm going to rename this one particle dust. And then what I'll do is duplicate this layer, control D, and rename this particle sand because I'm going to have this actually drop onto a layer and show you that. And that way you'll have both of these particles uh, compositions so you can dissect them, take them apart, and get what you want. So let's open the particle sand parameters here. And I'm going to come into the particular effect controls. And I'm turning the physics from air to bounce. Now what I'm going to do is create a new solid layer and call this floor. I'm going to uh, make it maybe 2,000 by 2,000 or so and change the color to, I don't know, a mid-gray. We'll start off with that. I'm going to make it a 3D layer. I'm going to rotate it in X space here. I'm going to hit Shift to snap it 90 degrees. And then hit V to bring up our Move tool and just drop it down like a floor, like so. If you want to, you can push it back in Y space. And uh, let's go ahead and add a light just to make it look a little more classy. Uh, spotlight, let's make it white or maybe tint it a little bit blue, that'll look better. And bring the cone angle down a little bit and the cone feather down and OK. Now what I'm going to do is uh, take the light parameters here and make it point pretty much straight down. Point of interest. Straight down. See, put this in the center of the composition and this I'm going to raise up. There we go. So you get a nice diffuse look here. So we have our floor done and some lighting to make it look a little more interesting. So now let's have the particles hit the floor and jump back into particular. And remember we changed this to bounce. And what I'm going to do is come down here to the bounce particle settings, change the floor layer to floor. And we also want to now increase the gravity so that the particles actually start dropping. We'll drop the floor below the particle layer here. So it looks like they're coming down. And when they drop, they'll hit the floor and they'll start bouncing. Now we need to adjust some of the parameters so they don't look like they're made out of rubber. Uh, they're supposed to be sand, right? So let's come down here and we can decrease the bounce to maybe two. So they come down here, hit the floor, and just kind of stop. Increase the bounce random. And I just give it a little bit of interest, maybe pop that up to five. You don't need much slide. And so now what you have is the text layer turning into sand and dropping straight down. Now the bad part about using bounce physics in particular is you lose the ability to create kind of a cool look with the particles blowing or any of the you know the the turbulence or anything like that the nice part about it is you end up getting this cool uh, interaction with the floor layer and as you can see it really came down into just a line and that looks a little strange we want more maybe a little bit more of a three-dimensional look so what you can do is pop up here to the emitter settings and increase the emitter size Z up and if you do that, you'll start spreading out your particles. Um, you don't want to do it too much because then it'll look strange with them falling down. So maybe about the default of 50 would work nice. So they'll fall and hit the ground and then just create a puddle of uh, particles there at the bottom. And uh, there's the animation of it. Bouncing. If you want this to go down faster, you can increase the gravity up and it'll be pulled faster down. Um, if you want a little more interest, uh, you can increase the bounce settings. Then your particles will hit and they'll interact with the floor and kind of trampoline back up in the air a little bit. Um, play with these settings to see what they do and you know just fine tune it till you get what you 
uh, are looking for. This gives you more of kind of the almost a wave or what would happen if water drops came down and hit the hit water it would splash back up. Uh, just different effects that you can get from all the different parameters and uh, hopefully that uh, answers your question Sean. So if you have any uh, other questions or comments hit me up at the trap code forum here at creativecow.net. If you have a specific uh, tutorial using one of the trap code products uh, especially particular Hey, give me a uh, shout out and maybe the next tutorial on creativecow.net from me will be an answer to your question. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, this is Michael Park for creativecow.net.